So number one, it says solve using matrices and back substitution. So if the question say, if the directions say this on the test, you have to solve it this way. So let's start by putting it in a matrix. What would my first row of the matrix be? One, 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 negative one, second row. One, negative one, five, five, and the third row. Five, one, one, 19. So remember, we can switch two rows around. We can multiply a row by a coefficient or, or by a constant. We could add two rows together. So our goal is to get a diagonal of ones and zeros underneath. So I already have one in that first position, which works perfectly. What do I want to do next? Put a zero right below it. So I need to make that a zero. How do I do that? I can multiply the first row. So row one times negative five. Well, what am I, what do I want? I want a zero here, right? So I would multiply row one times negative one. And then I don't need to do anything to row two. So I'm just adding that to row two. So my new row one becomes negative one, negative one, negative one, positive one. And row two is one, negative one, five, five. So we're gonna combine these together and this is gonna be our new row two. So zero, negative two, four, six. So rows one and three stay the same. And row two, Changes to this, zero, negative two, four, six. What do you want to do next? I want to change the five first, because I want to do my first column first before I move on to the second. So I want one, zero, zero in the first column. So I need to change that five to become a zero. How can I do that? Multiple. Supply the first row by negative five. We're gonna add that to row three. So this would become negative five, negative five, negative five, five. And we're combining that with the third one. So this would be zero, negative four, negative four, 24. Be super, super, super careful with your math for all of these. It's just a <laughs> lot of little math. Bless you. But you just have to be careful because one number gets added wrong and it'll throw everything off. So one, 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 negative one, zero, negative two, four, six. What do we want to do next? How can I change the negative two to become a one? I can multiply by negative one half. <coughs> Perfect. So I'm multiplying everything in that row by negative one half. So the new second row would be zero, one. What's four times negative one half? Negative two. And six times negative one half? Negative three. The first and the third row stay the same. What can we do next? You can do that. You can multiply by one fourth times negative one fourth on the bottom. So my new third row would be zero, one, one, and what's 24 times negative one fourth? Negative six. First two rows stay the same. That works, it just makes all the numbers in that third row smaller, but what do I need it's still in the third row? I need a zero in that second column spot in the third row. So how can I make that a zero? I can multiply row two by what? Negative one and add it to row three. So my new row two would be zero, negative one, two, three. And I'm adding that to row three, which is zero, one, one, negative six. 
Now, when we're trying to get this to be a zero, we have to work with row two here, because if I multiplied anything to row one and adding it to zero would change this zero. So we have to work with the second row now to get this to become a zero. So this is gonna become my new row three. I'm gonna write it up at the top here so I have more room. So when I add these together, I get zero, zero, three, negative three. And then the first two <laughs> rows stay the same. One, 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 negative one, and zero, one, negative two, negative three. All right, one more step before we get that diagonal of ones and zeros. I mean, what do I have to do next? Do what? Get the three to be a one, so how would I do that? Multiply by one third, or divide by three. So my new third row would be zero, zero, one, negative one. And the first two rows stay the same. Do I have that diagonal of ones and zeros underneath now? Yes. So now we can plug it back in to our system of equations, and we're going to solve using back substitution now. So again, just be super careful when you plug it in. Our first equation is going to be x plus y plus z is equal to negative 1. Second equation will be y minus 2z is equal to negative 3. And the third equation will be z is equal to negative 1. So this is part of your answer. I need to see this. But we also have to solve using back substitution now. So I have z is equal to negative 1. How would I find y? Plug the negative 1 into z in the second equation. So I have y minus 2 times negative 1 is equal to negative 3. So y plus 2 is equal to negative 3. We're going to subtract 2 on both sides, so y is equal to negative 5. And then how do I find x? Plug in y and z. So x minus 5 minus 1 is equal to negative 1 x minus 6 is equal to negative 1. We add 6 to both sides, so x is equal to 5. So how would I write my answer? 5, negative 5, negative 1. Awesome. So again, if the directions say solve using matrices and back substitution, this is part of your answer, the matrix is part of your answer, and also the coordinates are part of your answer. You have to solve using matrices. If I had an example, so I'm just going to make a matrix up right now. Something like 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's say this was 1, 0, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. If I want a diagonal of 1s and zeros underneath, what would the first thing I do be? What should it be? Perfect. I could switch 1 and 2. Why would I not want to divide the first one just by 2? Because then that would give me fractions. All of your matrices on the test, all of these, the solving ones, will be able to be solved without fractions. But here, I could have divided everything here by two, that would give me fractions. So what you would want to do would be switch one and two, that way you're not working with fractions in solving all of that. Dilbert invests a total of 33,000 in two accounts, paying 6% and 10% interest respectively. How much was invested in each account if after one year the total interest was 2,780? So I need to set up the systems of equations, so two equations, and solve to see how much is in each account. How would I do that? Yeah, x plus y is equal to 33,000. So my total amounts, what would my other equation be? 
remember we moved the decimal place twice, so it would be 0 0.06x, because I'm going to call 6% x and 10% y. So plus 0.1y is equal to how much was earned, how much interest was earned. So 2,780. All right, we don't get a calculator for the test. How would I solve this to make the numbers a little bit nicer here? I can multiply the second equation by 10. That would be the first step that I would do for anything like this, just to give us nice whole numbers. So I'm gonna multiply the first one by, the second one by 10. That gives me 6x plus 10y is equal to 27,800. Multiply by 100, so we add a zero there. I moved everything two spaces. All right, what could I do next? I can subtract the x over. Why would I do that? What's your goal? What are you trying to do? So we're trying to solve a substitution. That would work. I'm going to subtract the x over to make this y is equal to 33,000 minus x. So we're going to take what y is equal to and plug it into the y here. You don't have to solve using substitution. If you want to do elimination, that would work too. So 6x plus 10 times 33,000 minus x is equal to 278,000. Distribute the 10. So 6x plus 330,000 minus 10x is equal to 278,000. I forgot a zero. There we go. What would I do next? Combine like terms. So I can do 6x minus 10x, which would give me negative 4x, and then subtract 330,000 on both sides. Negative 52,000. What do I do next? Divide by negative 4. So x is equal to 13,000. Awesome. So I found x. What else do I need? Y. So I would plug it into the first equation just because it's going to be easier to work with. So 13,000 plus y is equal to 33,000. Subtract 13,000 on both sides. So what is y equal? 20,000. So just make sure you tell me which one goes with which. So I'm investing 13,000 at what percent? 6% because I said the 6% was X and I'm investing 20,000 at 10% This 10% was the Y. So in the beginning, I ended up multiplying by 100 because I wanted to move it twice to make these whole numbers. And then same here. So I had to add two zeros because I multiplied it by 100. Any questions here? Good with this one? All right, let's take a look at number five. So five is asking us to multiply A times C. So let's check first to see if we are able to even multiply them together. What's the size of matrix A? A two by three. A two by three. I have two rows and three columns. What about C? A two by three. We're looking at C, A times C. So 
So remember, the insides have to be the same in order to multiply these together. So can I multiply A times C? Nope, so this would be not possible. All right, let's look at number seven. So here we wanna multiply A times B. So A is a two by three, what's the size of B? A three by two. So we gotta check the insides, make sure they're the same. They're the same, so can I multiply these together? Yes, what's the size of my answer gonna be? A two by two. The outsides give you the size of your answer. So I'm gonna draw my two by two here. So when we multiply the first one, we move in rows. The second one, we move in columns. So looking at my first row, first column, what would I do? Multiply the first number by the first number. So we get three plus the second number times the second number would be negative two, plus the third number times the third number would be zero. So three plus negative two plus zero is one. Everybody good there? Let's look at the next one. We're gonna work with the first row, second column. So that's gonna go in the first row, second column spot. So multiply the first number times the first number. We get negative nine plus the second number times the second number would be four plus the third number times the third number would be zero. Negative nine plus four plus zero, negative five. Next, second row, first column. It's gonna go in the second row, first column spot. Start by multiplying the first number times the first number. Two times negative one, negative two, negative five times two, negative 10, and four times five, 20. Negative two minus 10 plus 20, eight. Awesome. All right, lastly, second row, second column. Start by multiplying the first number times the first number. You get six plus the second number times the second number would be 20 plus the third number times the third number plus 32. Add them all together, what do we get? 58. Yes, so this would be our answer. So can I even add or subtract A and C together? Yes. So let's start with A. We have three times A. So if I multiply by a scalar, how would I do that? What do I do? Multiply it times everything in the matrix. So my new matrix A would be negative nine, negative three, zero, six, negative 15, 12. Be super careful when multiplying. Now I have to multiply five times matrix C. I'm gonna multiply everything times negative five and then just add my two matrices together. So negative five times negative two would be 10. Negative five times one, negative five, and negative five times negative three, 15. I do the same thing with our bottom row. It has to be multiplied to everything. Negative five times six, negative 30. Negative five times negative five, 25. And negative five times two, negative 10. Yeah, if you wanted to multiply everything just by five and then subtract them, that would work too. I think it might be easier to multiply by the negative. That way you don't have to worry about like subtracting negative numbers for each one, but it'll work either way. Just be careful. All right, so let's add negative nine plus 10, negative three plus negative five, and zero plus 15, six plus negative 30, negative 24, negative 15 plus 25, and negative, or 12 plus negative 10, two. 
awesome. So number nine, we have to find the inverse to the matrix. How do I find the inverse? So I switch the majors, negate the minors. So we just switch the positions of the majors. So that would be negative two, negative five, and then we make the minors negative. So we switch, flip the signs of the minors. So we get negative four and negative one. What else do I have to do to find the inverse? We multiply by one over the majors minus minors. So it'd be a times d minus b times c. So when we multiply, we get 10 minus 4. So this would be 1 over 6. So everything gets multiplied by this 1, 6. We have to distribute it to everything inside. So negative 2 times 1, 6 would simplify to what? Negative 1 third. Negative 4 times 1, 6. Negative 2 thirds. Negative 1 times 1, 6 would be negative 1, 6. And negative 5 times 1, 6 is negative 5 over 6. So this would be our inverse. How could we check to see if we found the right inverse? You would multiply a times the inverse of a. And then we also have to multiply the inverse of a times a. And you should get, for both of these, the inverse matrix, so 1, 0, 0, 1, when you multiply them. So this is just a way to check your work. For 10, we have to use Kramer's rule to solve the systems of equations. Kramer's rule is using the determinant. So first thing I want to do is find the determinant of the whole thing. So I use just the coefficients here. So my first row would be 1, 1, negative 2. Second row, 3, negative 1, negative 5. And third row, 2, 1, 2. How do I find the determinant of a 3 by 3? I got to write the first two columns on the outside here. So 1, 3, 2, and 1, negative 1, 1. What would I do next? Majors minus the minors. So majors always start in the upper left-hand corner. That first number is included in the majors. So majors minus minors. So here we have 1 times negative 1 times 2. Be negative 2. Plus 1 times negative 5 times 2 negative 10 plus 2, negative 2 times 3 times 1, negative 6, minus the minors. So minors start in the bottom. 2 times negative 1 times negative 2 would be positive 4, plus 1 times negative 5 times 1 would be negative 5, 2 times 3 times 1, so let's add up all of our majors. We get negative 18 minus the minors would be 5. Negative 18 minus 5, negative 23. What do I do next? So for d sub x... We have to replace the x column with the answer column. So 2, 8, negative 7 goes in our answer column. The other ones, the other columns stay the same. So 1, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, negative 5, 2. Now we're just working with this matrix here, so we're going to rewrite the first two columns on the outside. 2, 8, negative 7, 1, negative 1, 1. How do I find the determinant? Majors, minors, minors. Majors, minus, minors. 
So start with our majors. 2 times negative 1 times 2. Negative 4 plus 1 times negative 5 times negative 7. 35 plus 2 times 8 times 1. Negative 2 times 8 times 1. Negative 16. Minus the minors. So minors start at the bottom. Negative 7 times negative 1 times negative 2. Negative 14. Negative 1 times negative 5 times 2. Negative 10. And 2 times 18. 2 times 8 times 1. 16. So let's add up our majors. Negative 4 plus 35 minus 16. 15. Minus the minors. So negative 24 plus 16 would be negative 8. 16 minus 8. Minus negative 8. Yes. Minus negative 8. Minus negative 8 turns into a plus, so this would be 15 plus 8, which is 23. So for our determinant for y, we're replacing the y column with the answer column. So 2, 8, negative 7 goes in the middle now. The x column and the z column stay the same. 1, 3, 2, and negative 2. Negative 5, 2. So now we're working with d sub y. We're going to write our first two columns on the outside. 1, 3, 2. 2, 8, negative 7. Majors minus minors. So start with the majors. We get 16 minus 20 plus... 42 minus the minors. So minors start at the bottom. This would be 32, negative 32 plus 35 plus 12. Sixteen minus twenty plus forty two would be thirty eight. Yeah. Minus the minors would be fifteen. Yeah. Thirty eight minus fifteen. Twenty three. Let's do the same thing for D sub Z. Now we are replacing our z column with the answer column. So 2, whoa, 2, 8, negative 7 goes in the z column. The first two columns stay the same. So that would be 1, 3, 2, and 1, negative 1, 1. Find our determinant, we write the first two columns on the outside, 1, 3, 2, 1, negative 1, 1. Majors minus minors, what do we get for d sub z? For d sub z? We agree? 46? Okay. 46. Now for our final answer, it's d sub z over d d sub y over d, d sub z, no, d sub x is first, x, y, z, d sub x, d sub y, d sub z. So let's plug everything in. This would be 23 over negative 23. Then 23 over negative 23. And 46 over negative 23. So when we simplify, what do we get? Negative 2? Negative 2.
Any questions here? So it's just finding the determinant again and again and again. You just replace whatever determinant you're trying to find. If you're trying to find x, replace the x column with the answer column. So two more on this page that I want to do, 11 and 15. So we're solving for x. What should I do first? Subtract a. So I'm going to solve my equation for x and then plug in the matrices at the end. So I'm going to subtract a and then what? Divide by 4. So x is equal to, now you can leave it like this and find 2 times b minus a and then divide that by 4. Or if you wanted to simplify, you can simplify. I'm just going to leave it like this and find it. That way I'm only dividing by 4 at the end and I'm not working with fractions throughout. So let's start with 2 times b. So 2 times b, we're multiplying 2 times our entire b matrix. So this would now be 4, 2, 2, 2. So we're going to take that, 4, 2, 2, 2, and subtract a. So we get 4 minus 1 would be 3. 2 minus negative 1 is 3. 2 minus negative 1 and 2 minus 2, 0. And then the last step is to divide by 4 or multiply by 1 fourth. So when we multiply, we have to distribute it to everything. So we get 3 over 4, 3 over 4, 3 over 4, and 0. And this would be x. So 15, we are finding the inverse. What do I do to find the inverse? So we multiply by 1 over AD minus BC. And we switch the majors and negate the minors. So when we switch the majors, we get negative 6, 9. We just switch the positions and we negate the minors. So we change the signs. So it becomes positive 8 and negative 7. They stay in the same spot. We just make them negative. Now, 1 over our determinant would be 1 over 9 times negative 6 is negative 54 minus negative 8 times 7, negative 56. So 54 minus negative 56, that would be 1 over 2. Then we got to distribute that to everything. So we get negative 3, 4, negative 7 over 2, and 9 over 2. That would be our inverse.